Have you have you guys week been so far? Busy. Busy. Busy, busy. Yeah. Busy, busy. Just getting towards the end of Q4. So we're all gonna be very busy, right? Oh yeah. Just trying to get signing in here. You working all the way up to Christmas? All the way up to Christmas Eve? Me? Yeah. I'll I'll be uh, probably working on Christmas some. So you're gonna work I, better uh, Christmas though? Yeah, my customers. I mean it's business is good year round, but they're very focused on retail and uh, you know. You gotta. I, I enjoy the holidays, financially. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Well, my family own a restaurant, so we're always we're always open, like Christmas Christmas parties. So we always have the Christmas and New Year's parties. Yeah. And it's like, so you, you see all the people getting drunk, and then you know yeah. you don't need to wait until the end of the till the end of the shift, and see whatever is left. Uh, same here. Just, How are uh, you, Greg? All right, doing well. Sorry about earlier. I was, uh, sounds like it, similar situation as, as Nate's having where dealing with uh, fires for customers from time to time. That's what we all get, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy to do today's, today's show for Trey because he's, uh, he's, he's talking about parties, right? So he's partying and uh, he's in Colombia right now. So we'll, uh, we'll wait and see who will show up today um it's my it's my birthday evening i was born just after 12 so um after 12 tonight i will probably drink one and um see what see where that takes me this weekend so no normally i don't do anything on my birthday like it's when you're getting to a certain age then it's like it's about the kids no longer about my birthday i, I yeah. don't really mind well, and you'll be you'll be up after twelve tonight, anyways, with uh, with the new with one. The one. Yeah, most, <laughs> most likely, so you will be the first one to say happy birthday. I don't know, and what like you know, like a crying a crying one, but yeah, we'll definitely get one. I'm just trying to see if we're going live on YouTube or not. Here we go, Raquel is joining. You had a busy week as well, Greg? Or? Pardon? You had a busy week? Yeah, yeah, we've been uh, keeping pretty busy over here. A couple of, uh, whenever you get, I mean, it's, it's good problems to have, right? New, new customers that are doing things differently. They're trying to figure it out. So we have to figure it out and, you know, expanding sort of the offering that we're doing. So it's, it's good. It's exciting. It's fun. It's uh, also a little hectic. <laughs> always, always. Hey, good afternoon, Diane and Raquel. How are you? I'm here. I'm well. How are you doing? Can't complain. I'm, uh, I'm going to be a year older, so I'm 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 good. I'm, <laughs> I don't want to say wiser. I'm probably a couple of gray gray hairs, um, like like uh, heavier. But like other than that, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, like I can't complain. That's, that's parenting for you, though, right? I know. That's I where know. you got all my gray hairs from. <laughs> from parenting. <laughs> How's your baby? I want to see her. Where's she on? because of me my office is like just outside that so you need to go outside the house and then and then come back in and we done that on purpose so i wasn't as if if we added the door that uh, we could have added the door but then they would have came in every single moment so, no, that's not that's not the best for me so like this is actually better she's uh, they just went out so she's um she's good she's um she's got colic now so that's that's oh, right. that's brutal. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That is rough. One one day, one day it's good. One day it's like, you know, and terrible. And then it's like, yeah, you will you'll be up to like five. And then finally she falls asleep. And my my son will wake up. So <laughs> coffee right now is my best it's friend. Right. <laughs> so that's fine. That's all fine. How about you, Raquel? How's your week been? 
Oh, it's been busy. Very, very busy. Just trying to, to go with the flow and keep things moving. <laughs> Q4, right? So is that the same for you? Like at the end of the end of the year is like hectic? Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be like everyone's got everything that has to be moved right now or yesterday. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's so funny where it's where because I'm like part of two industries, like 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 running multiple companies, one in the logistics and then one in one in construction. Construction just slows down completely to and grinds to a hold like around like Christmas time. Like everybody's like normally mid-December is like that's cut off point. But that's mm -hmm. when you know the logistics is like just ramping up massively. So when I'm thinking at one side, I'm like, okay, that's great. I won't get this this many emails anymore. Like it's it's the other side that's ramping up. So yeah, like I should have thought twice by just doing two different industries where one slows down and the other one ramps up. <laughs> I'm just excited for a vacation the week of Christmas. That's, I'm just waiting for that. So <laughs> are you, are you, are you going to take some time off? I I'm planning to be working on the road. I don't ever take time off ever, um, but um, we're going to Florida. So hopefully we'll be in the sunshine and out of the coldness. It's today's actually the warmest it's been in like a month and it's 50 degrees. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, here in Scotland, we're, we never go above, I don't know, whatever it is, like in, in Fahrenheit, but it's, it's unbelievable. Like here, it's, like right now, it's like uh, degrees Fahrenheit, it's uh, minus two at the moment. Oh, so, um, no. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah. But you know what, like um, you get used to it. So like they say, but like I'm, I'm, I'm made for, I'm made for warmer climates. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see until finally can take the laptop somewhere sunnier hopefully hopefully in february we're able to go we might we've got family living in dubai so we might we might travel that way um, nice. but like i rather i rather work remote with a laptop close to a beach or yeah. compared to here but yeah that's 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 where we are that's what we're gonna do uh fingers crossed so <laughs> very nice hi nathan how are you Doing well. You sorry, I'm on and off. I'm trying to get State Farm. I their their commercials say they're great. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> I had an accident uh, Wednesday before last, oh, and no. uh, still haven't gotten an estimate on my car. So I'm just patiently waiting. Did it? Did it do that? Did it do that remotely now as well? Like, do you need to like file in like, you know, like the photographs yourselves or someone coming over to see the car? No, well, I sent the pictures in from the site where it happened on the freeway. I sent pictures in when I dropped it off at the collision place that night. Um, and they're supposed to handle everything and you're supposed to have an estimate within 48 hours, but with the kind of car it is and the way it hit, I'm pretty sure that there's so many computers in that thing that it, it they're going to have problems with the supply chain and everything, you know? Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I'm just glad no one was hurt. So we, especially here in this. <laughs> yeah, here, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Not bad at all. Good seeing you today. Thank you. I, uh, glad to be here. I, sorry. I'm late. I am, uh, I'm, I'm pretending I'm Chris Jolly since you're pretending you're Trey Griggs. <laughs> so fascinatingly late, that's what it is, right? The, um, like I, what, what I was going to do today anyway was a bit more of a free flowing episode rather than Trey always, as he's so good with his, like, you know, holding on to whatever like routine he's got. But I was, uh, was definitely not going to do that. One of the one of the things I wanted to see, like if, if anybody has seen that, the, the um, it wasn't one of the topics though for today. But did anyone see that that CEO from Better.com firing nine hundred folk on um, on Zoom? Okay, so I read that's, about that's like breaking up with somebody by text message, isn't it? That's 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 kind of what it is. Did you did you see it there? I read about it. I, I didn't want to watch it because I would have been like, I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> I probably would have like, yeah, no. Talking about effectiveness, like it's, it is quite effective, right? 900 people within two minutes. There you go. That was, 
Um, so like I'm like, what, what's what's people's opinions about like high like there's no like you know, I've had a couple of um, interviews with like with, with people in, in, in my industry like where they were further away. So we we actually had Zoom interviews, and you know in a sense that's all new. So what's what what's your opinion about like fight like hiring? But then again, like it comes to the firing part as well, hiring and firing on Zoom or teams or whatever it might be. I don't mind the, sorry, you're, you're muted, Raquel. I think she she's working. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't mind the firing people by Zoom. I think that we're at the point, like, you know, especially, you know, almost two years into the pandemic, you know, culture of, accepting that certain things will be done by video chat or video meet or whatever doing it in mass is the problem that i have like if you're already gonna terminate me by zoom take the time and do it one-on-one -on -one. yes it's 900 people but you know what it's 900 people who freaking should matter to a company period I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to attend a conference and they'd be like, you know, like Oprah giving out presents. And it's like, you get a termination slip and you get a termination slip. It, it, it's ridiculous. Do you remember, do you remember the movie with George Clooney up in the air? Yeah. So he was, part of the show was how he attained, I think it was United Airlines. Um, it was the story of a guy who had more frequent flyer miles than anybody ever, like literally had his name on the side of a plane because he flew so much and had so many miles. And he's like the only person that ever attained that. Well, his job was to fly around and terminate people. He worked for 20, 25 different companies that would do mass layoffs and terminations. and. Um, his job was to fly around and do those terminations. How does one uh, apply for this job? I don't have a soul either, so I'm definitely down for this. So the, uh, I, I agree with Nico. I mean, it's it's a personal thing. Um, you know, I think corrective action could be made on Zoom, and you know, however you want Teams, whatever you want to do. But I think when it comes to separating, I think it's a face to face. Um, plus, uh, you know. Hey, Nico, you're fired. Can you turn off the computer and not get any more information off of it, please? <laughs> There's also the security side of it. I don't know. I just, I just think that things should be done more personally than 900 people attending a Zoom webinar yeah. where they get fired. It, I, I think that actually firing people on Zoom is better than like, you know, like when I got let go from uh, Verizon, they they had me come into work which is you know two hours away from my house just to call me into the office say okay get the fuck out and then like i leave but that's another two hours home like that's just inconvenient i'm all for firing people over zoom i mean get it over with and you know even as a manager you know if i have to fire somebody i, I want to get it over with as quickly as humanly possible because it's not personal it is business but at the same time 900 people at once is just bad optics you know what it was with this with this with this story was and i don't know what's what's real and like you know what's what's gossip what's not but like what they were talking about was like the people on that call were literally taking the 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 mic right like they were saying they were they were on for two hours but actually clocking for eight stuff like that and then I'm like, okay, if you, if you, because that's like, in my opinion, that's stealing, right? If you don't have any heart for the company, why should the company have a heart for you? That might be quite abrupt, why I say there. But like, I'm like, if you're, if you're doing that, then like, why should he be then so sensitive about what he does to you? Hi, Robert. Hi, Aaron, by the way. Sorry. Why? Great, great, great seeing you guys in and jumping on this amazing story. What, what's your opinions on this? I don't know what so you're I, talking about. I, I'm, I'm in agreement that I do not like fire. I don't like firing in mass in general. I don't care if it's in person or over Zoom. I just think that that's very, uh, it's a shitty thing to do. 
I do think when you, because ultimately, yes, it is just business. It, but it's still personal. At the end of the day, like my paycheck has now stopped. If I'm the person being let go. And so that, that to me, that, that you can never separate the personal side of that because ultimately that is your livelihood, even though there are still jobs out there, you know, and people can still go get another job. They were more often than not, folks are not prepared for that, especially if it is layoffs due to like company performance. It's like, Hey, I was doing my job. I just happened to not make the cut. So do not believe in, in mass. And to me, there's not also a happy medium. Like as we move more and more towards this remote forward type of world, uh, to Nico's point, like, I don't want to drive two hours to the office. This sucks. That's stupid. But keeping it at least as personal as you can do and understanding that while, yes, there's, it, it is just business, there's still human beings involved in your business. It's not, there's a big difference in firing a program and just turn it off versus saying, Greg, do this. Because he, he's been, he's been in the news before. before. He's been in the news before, right? This guy, like he's he's done he's done this before. So it's like it's like a nine hundred. To be honest, if you if your company is like, and this is an is that a manager's role or whatsoever, like nine hundred people that were underperforming, not just for like a day or a week, or like they were underperforming. Apparently, according to his words, underperforming for like a long time. Sounds but, like strict management. The, yeah, they're like in, in, a, in a sense, that's the management's fault, right? Not not like the guy uh, that was actually doing the work. They were never being told that they were shit or not doing their work correctly. And all of a sudden, 900 turn up. Just imagine we've done no word on the street. Thanks, guys, for all joining. Um, that's it. Right? I think, I think my view on it is, too, number one, if anybody goes to work for that guy in the future, they're an idiot. Um, yeah, I would doubt it's called better.com better.com yeah it's very ironic. And second secondly it just google better.com and hit news secondly if you go online and get a mortgage you're getting ripped off anyway you need to go talk to somebody get options don't let don't get online and let them say hey this is a great deal don't go to rocket mortgage either because they suck too just saying it's, I, I always think like but still no matter what industry you're in it's a people's business right every industry remains a people's business so mm -hmm. if you the way we got our new mortgage for this house it was like we got a recommendation of someone that like uh, that just like one of our friends that got a mortgage and like oh you should speak to this person she's so good and that like you know like we spoke to her and she was like she was on the ball and it was just a recommendation because like, that's the only way you get, you get people recommending other people because they're doing a great job. And then, you know, that's, that's how you get a name, no matter what industry it is. Cause people, the best, the best form of advertising is just doing a great job and letting other people talk about you. Yeah. That's, that's called branding by the way. Just saying as a if, brand if manager, you're, if you're good, you'll tell people how good you are. If you're great, other people tell you how good you are. Mm -hmm. True. it's yeah. like it's like you were saying about you know your family restaurant if people have a good time they won't tell anybody but if they have a shitty time everybody knows yeah uh, that's true I no one I goes and, no one goes and I, I laugh when people are like give us a google review because people give negative google reviews i don't get on google to do a positive review mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we get. It's like it's only if if like you know you never hear anything, and then there was like a a bone in the salmon, right? And someone right. someone was just complaining about that. It was, a, it was like, well, it's it's a, it's a it's an animal. It's a fish. It's like you know, what do you think? Like it's uh, like some of these things happen, and then you're like, you know, th it would be great if people would do it, take the positives, but it's always the negatives that that people leave behind. So, um, but Mishek, how are you today? Great Good to you. see you. Uh, uh, you look a little different today, Trey. A little, a little, I know, sound a little I different know. too. I, I, I was actually, I was actually thinking when I was doing my hair this morning. I was like, "Shall I do that little, like you know, the little, the little?" <laughs> style? I, was like, I, should, I actually should have just done it. Uh, I mean, I did. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't see come on it's right there if you turn upside down robert then you do it yeah it's here it's upside down it's just, it's <laughs> how's everybody doing today fantastic oh, well wow. mm. weather's bad so i'm on the call because i'm not playing golf but oh yeah it was, was a good day for golf but here well this we play winter golf but winter golf in scotland is absolutely rubbish 
like the the court you can't play the course so you just go you just go and hit the and hit the, the fairway for a couple of times but that's literally you just need wellies rather than golf shoes so that's no i don't play a lot in the, in the winter it's hard to complain with me today because we're we're about ready to get like six to eight inches of snow in the, the next like six hours or something so yeah. and we had a bit of snow this morning that disappeared quite quickly but yeah i'll, I'll probably look forward to a bit of i hope we get some snow during christmas we always get it after and that's when like you know i don't need it then anymore just christmas time that's fine like the, a couple of days of christmas and after that, I, can it again. I don't so, want it at all ever i'm in the wrong state i'm waiting on aaron i'm waiting on like chucky or something to pop up behind those steps <laughs> <laughs> You know exactly. what it looks like a bit, Aaron? Like your like like that basement looks a bit like the Home Alone basement. Yeah. Where's, where's like the you know like the one with like the 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 heat tank? My house. Well, no, my furnace is over here, but my house is so old that I have trees holding it up. Hmm. At least they're good trees, I guess. So you live in a tree. I like the punching bag. <laughs> live in yeah. a tree. Now. Aaron lives in Neverland. Nice. Apparently, Aaron has anger issues. I don't use it. I don't use it. It is 45 degrees in December in Chicago. It is a great day. Yeah. That's warm. <laughs> That's very warm for Chicago. We had 38, 40 yesterday, and that blew my mind. Our, our high that. today is 55. I, I could not be more ecstatic. I'm going to have to mow started... lawn in December. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So I live on Lookout Mountain, and when I woke up this morning, it was 41. The high today is 66, but that's not till midnight, and it's supposed to be up to close to 70 tomorrow, and then it'll drop back. It, it's The weather is insane. This time of year, it'll switch 25 degrees in six <laughs> hours. You never know what it's going to do. 57 degrees here in Pittsburgh. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's a, so like half of that, after you saying that, Nate, right? Like one of the topics I wrote down, and it was especially after cups. So I'll throw that in there, right? As another discussion. I'm not going to hold on to everything as, as Trey always does, but you know, like the scene of sustainability side of things when we're all talking about like global warming and everything else. And now, like after, especially because COP26 was here in, in Glasgow, like in Scotland, it's like, it's almost annoying this buzzword sustainability where a lot of people are like i got actually from my other business um which is in the construction industry and, and, and we delivered an amazing project for a client um and it was a law firm and one of one of the one of the companies was they phoned me up and said nick would it make a difference if we plant some trees in your name because of this project you know so we're green and then we can say we're you know we're we're, we're net zero i'm like and that's kind of disguising what you do, right? Like we're, you're not trying to make the product green or you're not trying to make, the only thing you do is like you do the dirty shit that you do. And then, and then at the front you say, but by the way, we planted 150 trees just to offset what we did. So, so, like, so I, I guess to correlate with that, you know, living in Chattanooga that, in Tennessee, that's, or I live in North Georgia, but still the same. I'm five minutes from Tennessee, but everything's powered by TVA, which is coal. So are you really saving the world by driving a Tesla? Because the only way that power is made is with coal. So it's, you're really just using more. It's, I, I didn't post it. I'll, I'll see if I, can, if I can find that image. I wanted to post it. And I, I might do it because I know it's, it's definitely good. You're going to have the two cams, like the pro, the, the pro EV and then like the people that are not. But um, there you was can this. post whatever you can post whatever you want. Your trade today. I, I, yeah, no. I, I, yeah. Anybody I think that uh, dirigibles uh, will uh, will will come back as far as uh, you know for carrying uh, cargo? Because I mean they're super efficient, right? Basically, like uh, I was talking to a guy last night, and he's like, "There, we have like a we have a, a hundred TEO TEU, sorry, uh, dirigible that is carbon neutral." And it will ever, it'll actually never land. It'll just, you know, like basically just crane down everything that it carries and just keep going. 
It's kind of an, and I just wonder about that, especially when you consider how rough like uh, the oceans are and how the, you know these weather weather patterns aren't going to be a problem if you can just go above the uh, the the uh, the weather, right? Yeah. Um, to 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 me is to for like what, what I always see is like I can't find it, but one is I was this image showing two cars. So one guy is in like he's driving a diesel car and he's and then you see this bubble saying I feel so dirty, right? But then you see this guy driving a Tesla, but then in the background you see like hooked up to all the coal, like you know, uh, industry, and then it's like, um, you know, I feel so clean. But you know, it's still uh, I can't remember. There was there was this company was doing I can't remember what it was. We were talking about this uh, when we we're actually pitching for Cyprus. We were actually pitching uh, to a new client, and they were they were considering um, going for a. I think it was a hydrogen um, product, but a hydrogen cell? product was was being manufactured in Australia and probably on coal or whatever, then shipped all the way over to the US via a ship that runs on diesel, and then you know put on here. So I'm like, before that, before it arrives, before it arrives on the shore, like it, it's created this whole backlog of of non-clean transportation and then you're trying to be clean and i'm like unless you what like you know what we're pro providing for for some of our clients is we're going to manufacture in the us and put something on your trucks that you currently have and if it's some because the, the infrastructure like the infrastructure is not there not right now right and then, and then um, this morning like talking about the ev this morning on the news here I don't know if you've seen if that's over in the US as well. Tesla just introduced um, you can download games now while drive well in your Tesla when it's when you're non drive when you're not driving. So now you can have like Snake and all these kind of games on your car while driving. So that's that's. When it, when it comes, yeah, so when it comes to autonomous driving and stuff like that, but then they can see what it says at the beginning. It says, see you, Robert, have a nice weekend. Um, what it says is like, um, are you are you driving right now? Or are you are you the co are you co-driver? Are you a passenger? And um, so you can just overwrite it, which which I find like very, very amusing to see. Yeah, that's what we <clears throat> that's what we want more distracted driving that's woo, great idea that's what we need right <laughs> this is from the same guy who said that he'll be implanting chips in people's heads via his new company Neuralink by the end of next year Nico I saw your comment are you which <clears throat> which desk the new one at his house or the one at Freightwaves the new one at his house. Uh, if y'all haven't seen it, I can share it. Uh, it amazing. is an amazing, amazing thing. So, hold on. This yeah, a... is Craig Fuller's new desk at his home office. It's a literal wooden plane wing that they restored and turned into a desk. If you saw... Enough. So if you saw, he lives on the mountain next to the mountain I'm on. And if you saw the view from the other side of that office, it it, it rivals that desk. <laughs> it's amazing. But shock. But it, dude, just, especially as someone who just took over as the CEO of Flying yeah. Magazine, like this is such an amazing branding piece. It, it just... I couldn't take my eyes off of it. This is a freaking spectacle, and I love it. That's that's a good. Does anybody else have like a special, a special? Whether it's like, not, it's you say piece of furniture, right? Because we're not all going to have like, because um, one of my friends has an old an old mini, and he turned it into a barbecue, like the front of a mini. Oh wow! And that was amazing. So like the hood, like you just open the hood, and that's the barbecue. So I was like. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely something I would like to have. So that's in that same line of, of, of that desk, I would say, Nico. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got one, one like that? 
ordinary not furniture. Cool. No. no. <laughs> Tyler, how are you cool. today? Going on, Trey. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm good. I'm a bit younger today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit more hair, but um, I'm uh, I'm in the late. I apologize. What are we talking about besides Craig Fuller's wings here? We've we've had uh, the start. We were talking about the guy, the CEO from Better.com, that just fired 900 employees over Zoom. So we just spoke about like you know hiring and firing via Zoom. We've had sustainability and greenwashing. Just plant a couple of trees, and is that a trend, or do we see that happening? Um, what else? What else did I have on the topic? I, of course, we, we, one good thing is, of course, with the with the, the the job market at the moment, like it is, it is like at an ultimate high, as in like the amount of jobs available. So, as with, with relation to retention, that will come up back to the the other topic. See you guys, I gotta take this one. Is um. How is everybody with like, you know, with retention and everything else and like getting, because we spoke about this in relation to um, in the construction industry right now, like on the other side that I'm working with, it's so difficult to find people. There are actually people walking off site because they can get more, paid more somewhere else. Have you, have any of you guys that are in hiring, direct hiring positions noticed it's gotten a little had bit easier in the past maybe 30 days than it was in the middle of the summer. I don't know if that's a holiday thing or what's going on, but I feel like we've gotten a little bit more relaxed on the, uh, you know, people are retaining their jobs a little bit more. And I'm actually, you know, on our end, we have more people reaching out to us for looking for opportunities rather than this summer when, you know, I'd send out for 15 interviews and I would hope one showed up. It's it's yeah we've we've seen it here as well. It's a bit it's a bit more relaxed as it was like summertime, hundred percent. Um, uh, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what that's gonna do into into twenty twenty two. You know, if we're gonna just you know see a bit more relaxed and like it's 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 calming down, or if we just you know are we gonna see another spike, or will it now like slowly I, just like? And my question, I guess, to that would be: are, Have you changed anything yourselves? Because we we took a step back because we were really struggling to find good quality individuals to bring in. And we took a step back and reevaluated our process and what we were offering and what we were, you know, how we were going through things. And I'd say, yeah, we, we did in the past month or so, uh, probably month and a half, two months, we've had a lot more success, but I think, and maybe part of it, not just to pat ourselves on the back, part of it probably is to do with the, the market, but you know, we, we had to kind of take a 180 from what we were doing. And once we did that, all of a sudden we did see more success. So, you know, it may just be something different that, that you're doing. Is that the first time, is that the first time you changed it, Greg? Like since, since getting like, I I mean, so, but like we've, we've made a difference in what we put in our packages because we, we understand what used to be important is no longer you know what used to be number one is, is maybe at this point not not number one. So like they kind of the outlay of the packages are slightly different for us and how we approach it. So have you guys done that? Like, is this the first time you you done a, sw- a switch or? Well, so the to to give a little bit of background, um, you know, last year we really were were very slow to bring anybody new on. We didn't, you know, when nobody knew what was going to happen. This year, we kind of expedited a little bit then to catch up. And one of the things that we we saw was that, you know, in the front half of the year, there were people that we got a, a quick hit on. And then probably February or March, it really, you know, that there wasn't much that we were able to, to do, right? And it was, you, you'd run into people who weren't interested or, you know, they, they'd send in their resume and then you're talking to them and, you know, they they're looking for something different. And instead of trying to continually pound the square pegs into round holes, one of the things that I was happy that we were able to do is we were kind of able to pivot and, and turn the whole round. Right. Um, and, and basically say, okay, this is what people are looking to do now. Let's, let's try and instead of just hope we find the right candidate for us, let's change a little bit of what we're doing. And it does have to do with, you know, compensation, but also some of the other things that we're, you know, offering as far as, you know, flexibility and things like that 
Yeah, we had we did a massive pivot like that too. We went from you know traditional advertising to throwing videos out there for recruiting, like oh, just a million different directions we went. It would be interesting to see, like obviously Greg and you know Trey over there, um, if we got if a correlation and causation, you know, may not be the same thing. Is it the market or was it just that we were all three really good at revamping and figuring out how we were going to bring people on? It's, def it's, it's definitely, I think, a bit of both because in initially, no matter what we did at the very start, we, we, made, we made a change already in the hiring process. And like in the summer, we, we hired people that never showed up. Right. And then you went and we don't hire, we don't hire like as in, we don't, we don't hire in a single, like a single interview, like because of, because of like the, the, the line of work where, where we, we do that on several, several conversations. And we hope like, depending on where they are situated to at least have uh, one in person. Because for me, like, I understand like, you know, with the, the whole zoom, the whole zoom scenario that you can hire now remotely, which is great. I'm, 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 I don't know if I'm just old school, but I want to look someone in the eyes properly through a screen. That's not the same. And I'm still the same when it comes to buying products, M small things I will buy electronics and stuff. That's fine. But when it comes to like clothes, furniture, whatsoever, like I want to, I want to know what I'm like, I'm not going to buy a car online. I want to see, I want to, you know, sit in it, like rev it, everything else. That's the same when, when, when we hiring people, like, and I don't know if that's just, I've not always been good at it, but like now it's almost like you can call bullshit from the from from the moment someone sits down in front of you, and I think that's still quite important. Yeah, I'm the same exact way, Nick. I mean, we we can have two or three phone call interviews, but as soon as I get it get you in the office, I can tell if everything you said was bullshit or not pretty quickly. Yeah, in a face to face. I mean, I, I'll be the the counter to that. I, I think that with Zoom and with some of the other things. Because when when interviewing somebody, you are looking for one, do you have the ability to learn the skills that we're going to need you to do? And, and two, do I believe you, right? It, if you're telling me that you've got 20 years of experience in every skill ever, but I don't believe a word you're saying, then, then I don't care what you're saying, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, it, maybe it is a little bit different. Maybe there are a little bit of, you know, things that are nuanced here and there, but I don't feel like there's a huge drop off from you know, being able to tell if somebody's full of it on a, on a Zoom call versus in person. I think one yeah. thing you're going to notice, though, is that there are different types of people in the job market now than there were back in the summer. And, you know, as much as people want to call BS on it, part of that has to do with the stimulus, uh, like the extra stimulus unemployment running out. And then now we're also at a time where a lot of people, like a lot of states unemployment is also running out. So people actually have an impetus to get up and get back to work because they're either not making as much as they were this summer or they're about to be making nothing at all. But also you have to look at the fact that, you know, there's stuff all over LinkedIn and social media, you know, there have been record people quitting jobs so you're not dealing with people who like lost their job because of pandemic, uh, you know, uncertainty or anything like that. You're dealing now with people who just flat out walked out of their job because they weren't happy. So when they're out there applying for jobs, I think that people are applying for jobs a lot more earnestly now because they're making the choice of where they want to go and what they want to do with their with the value that they bring the companies. Not always. And I think that you, you see that to me in a company that shows that you care about your people. Like it, it a company that treats a a hiring process like a like bringing somebody into a relationship, like Trey for a day does you know the multiple interview processes so that you actually get to know somebody the bringing somebody into your office so that you can call their bullshit or not those type of personal touches shows that you actually give a damn about the people that you're hiring and i think that the people that you're interviewing react to that they want that because they want to be treated like human beings as opposed to cogs in a wheel the, 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 i, I the, hear what you're saying you're you trying to respond to that 
Um, I was just on a primary, or I don't know what you call, like a first interview this morning. And um, the recruiter said that um, he will hire like 40 people who all say, oh yeah, I have a book of business of 50 clients, da, 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 this much experience. Then they go in and it's not true. Then they have to let them go because, you know, they suck and they lied. And um, so it, it still happens. And then, and when you're talking and you're in your, in your interview, um, people can tell, like there are things that there are tells in, in interviews, whether it's over the phone or whether it's Zoom or whether it's in person that you can tell when someone's lying. Um, and, and then the proof is in the pudding, if not, if they're a good liar, the proof is in the pudding because once they get the job and they just sit around on their lazy ass and not do anything, you know. What's 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 the kind of what's the kind of thing that, that everybody does in the or, or in their companies like probation periods and stuff? One thing that used to be a big big thing here, which they're they were trying to clamp down on, was like you were able to give out like six months contract, right? So rather than giving someone a permanent one, they were doing just like six, 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 and like at some point, like you know, that's just like having that in your back pocket, just in case it doesn't go well, there you go. We don't need to, so is that, is that, is that the same over in the US or like, is it because most, now here, I think you can only do it twice yeah. and then the third time you need to. So most places will have some sort of introductory period, but uh, also most, um, most places in the US, at least most states that I'm familiar with are uh, at will employment. So your, your contract, we're not necessarily doing a contract. It's more an agreement that, Hey, here's what I'm going to get paid and et cetera, et cetera. So is it, is it, cause what we have here knows that after giving someone, I think it's twice a six months contract. So either after the second time you need to give them a full time contract, like a permanent contract, or you need to let them go one of the two. So it's not like before, cause that was the way they used to do it here. Like an, it's quite an employee market in a sense here, where if you have a contract, like you've, you've got a lot, a lot of, um, a lot of say, where if you want to restructure, you can restructure, right? Like a contract is only so, so valuable in that sense. But like, that's one of the things they used to do here. And in the same with unpaid and interns was a big thing here as well, where like people were just working for nothing. And I'm all for it but not when the whole industry or in like multiple industries are just taking that advantage and saying, I'm seeing that as, for, as free labor. Yeah, I've never had a contract for a place that I've worked. Well, you know, until I became a consultant. So uh, the whole contract for working just seems like a novel idea because then you know, you can't just hire people and get rid of them for no reason. Yeah, I feel like it's it's more common on the C-suite here, Nick. You know, all of the executives are on contract, but most of your daily operations employees are just on that will to work. You know, if we're willing to pay you this for the week, you're going to work here. And if you're not willing, go do something different. That's like, I, it's quite a, so, so that's called a will to work. So, so do you have any rights then? Yeah, uh, it's state by state. And I have a feeling that Meshach probably knows more about this than any of us, just based on what he knows. But like Minnesota, for example, is a right to work state. So we have the right to employ you and you have the right to leave whenever you'd like to. Yeah, and you can you can fire somebody without cause. Yeah, if you don't like that they wear purple shirts every day to work, it's, really, it's rightful that you could let them go for that. Yeah, well, this really, only proves you you've fired them for protected reasons. You're you're in trouble, so you still have to document and and be you know conscious of that. So it's not it's not as quite as cut and dry. But yeah, yeah, at, at will is what they call it here. Yeah, yeah. So here here that's like you need to give. I think it's a minimum of. So the first is a could be a verbal warning, but it needs to be documented. 
then the other, then it's a minimum of two written warnings and stated what's going wrong before you then actually can say, okay, well, we're letting you go because you're not performing after we've given you these two written warnings. But like here, like just to say, you know, like I don't like your, I don't like you're wearing, you're wearing, um, you don't wear socks in the summer. Like we're letting you go. That's like no way here. That's so like a, that true story from my past. Uh, I was a assist. Uh, I was a store manager in training at Radio Shack. And I woke up one morning and decided to dye my hair blonde. And I went into work because, you know, there were many other blonde people at work. I just felt like being blonde at that time. And my district manager threatened to fire me for having an unnatural hair color. Yeah, you're not, like, <laughs> I believe that. I, yeah, no questions asked. I believe that one. That lasted exactly 60 seconds until I countered to her that she had to define why blonde was an unnatural hair color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a friend, uh, his name is um, uh, Victor Bernardo, and he's, uh, he's albino, and it's amazing what the comments he gets about his hair. It's... <laughs> But like, is it not that like I, I read this fact somewhere? I love I love random facts, right? I think it was something I can't remember what the year was, but there, we are going to run out of natural blondes in when, whenever it was because of like the way we reproduce and everything that we we will run out of natural blondes. So at some point we're all because, funnily enough, I don't know if I've got that picture. I was white when I was when I was like. My hair was like white. Let me see. I've got that picture somewhere here. My hair has been white too, but it came out of a bottle. Talking, talking about Nico. Talking about great ties, right? Look at this. <laughs> That's a shirt, right? That's a shirt. Oh yeah. So oh, I love it. So that said, uh, I was like, yeah, I was, I was like, like, like white and then all of a sudden i just turned like dark that was it so yeah so i, I saw I, we use those pictures for our wedding and i i still have them here in my office so um that's a good one so the, the other the other thing right last thing um because it's uh, it's going to be my birthday in a couple of hours so i'm uh, i'm gonna cut it not short today i'm gonna, gonna like bang on is anybody um, is, is is everybody like prepared for Christmas shopping and everything else? And everybody online or in store? Started yet? Not started yet? I'm, I'm done. done. I'm done. <laughs> done. The I'm only done. thing I've got to do is, and, and I've been putting it off. Take my kids to the mall because we have put it off where we can no longer get something for their mother um, online. So I have to actually take them to the mall this weekend, and that is going to be absolutely awful. But everything else done. <laughs> I'm planning on making gifts, so I still have to get to making them. <laughs> I like Me, that. Like, Rochelle, what, what do you what, what do you do? make? Um, no, so I I hike a lot, so I've collected a lot of things, and so I'm going to make some collages in like shadow boxes for family members. Yeah, that is amazing. I figured it was something that's like, you know, it actually means something to them and, and it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. So, yeah, yeah I see, like that whole <laughs> meaning that. thing, right? I see that now with my son. Like, I'm, I've am i always said before I had kids, I was like, you know, I was very good with, with like family members, kids and stuff. I'm like, you know, quite principal and like, no, you're not going to get that. And then I thought I was going to be quite a good parent in that sense. I was like, no, I will probably be quite like firm in that sense. No way. So like, <laughs> when, when my son was born, like it was literally like, can I have this? Yes, of course. And <laughs> I, that's biting me back in the backside right now. Cause like he, he wants something. And then, then after, you know, two days, that's it. Like he's not interested in it anymore. So I'm trying to like pair that back, but like I've dug, I've dug the, I've dug the holes. Well, now I'm, I'm, you know, hoping, hoping, or to be honest, when he's outside, he's great, right? Like I tried to get him outside as much as possible. We we don't have a lot of, we've got a lot of forests here and he lost the forest, right? So that's one of the things I always try to do. 
and that doesn't cost anything. But when he's in the house and he sees stuff and like that, can I, you should see his list for Santa, right? So we cut stuff out of the books and stuff, and then, which is nice because then we do something together. I'm not kidding you. It's in, his, it's in his room and he's literally got like a list of like a thousand pictures. And then that, that, that is Santa going to get me everything. I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not 100% sure if he can do that. But, my, yeah. my younger one figured out the game. Um, so my older one, we tell them both Santa will bring probably one gift for them to share and then two gifts for them individually. So they each get a total of three gifts from Santa and my older one's list is like yours, 10, 20 things long. And the younger one's like, okay, I'm going to put two or maybe three things on my list. And so here we are last year, he's five and he's got a hoverboard an electric scooter and a kid car. And, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, no, you, you, <laughs> you can't do that. You've won. You can't do that. <laughs> That's awesome. Those those e-scooters, right? Like, is, is is that big thing over in the US? Those e-scooters here, it's like massive. Everybody's on them. I I don't know how. I haven't seen too many around. Um, the hoverboard was was bigger here and it was also less likely that he would break his neck on it so that's what we went with <laughs> here you've got here you've got councils now actually like uh councils introducing e-scooters like rental e-scooters that are just like placed and dotted around like the cities to it's, explore the city I, we've seen those yeah get ready for that nick because they i think nashville already outlawed outlawed them because it was just littered with scooters everywhere yeah, everywhere you walk there's just scooters i remember like when it, sorry me say i think you're i think you're a mute oh sorry it's, uh, they keep ending up in the mississippi river here which is like they should not be <laughs> anywhere near a, a body of water because some drunk fool just sees it and, and looks at the water and sees it and goes i got an idea and you know <laughs> you i mean you're all. assuming they're drunk they could be high then <laughs> yeah, or just obnoxious but it's a, a, yeah that it, it's they, they've got them all over the place here but you don't see them used very often except for around the university of minnesota a lot of students use them all the time and they're yeah. two up all the time but yeah he's knowing me Shaq. What's that? It's snowing. Oh yeah, it's snowing. Of course, right. they're not using them. They're, they're 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 they put them all away for the for the winter. You don't even see it. They're not even out. Yeah, it's a whiteout here. Oh, by the way, before I forget, we do have a uh, uh, third Thursday. If anybody wants to join next uh, next this Thursday, uh, would love to see you all there. And also, Locher is going to be doing some. Um, uh, board of advocates so if anybody wants to kind of join a board of advocate we're going to you know shippers and brokers and carriers all, all three we just want to give people in the loop and meet and get some merch and talk and share like our new plans before anybody else gets to see them so if anybody's interested hey misha just... can you email me some information on that i'm yeah, interested. Even put it yeah. put it in the put it in the notes and then or, yeah, or just... share on share them on the post and then yeah, just send me an email uh, uh, here, and um, I'd love to love to hear. And then also, uh, uh, loadshare.net slash events, uh, where you can find uh, um, the uh, the third Thursday info. Yeah, the third Thursday. That's that's in my that's in my ongoing Thursdays. It's just with the kids. It's not, I've not really been able to go, but they're like they're amazing. I would say they're every time I've been on, they're 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 good. They're so different. And that's that's yeah that's they're they're great. I hope to hey, make. By the way, uh, Trey, this weekend pictures. Why do I not see any baby pictures from you? Mm -hmm. mm, I should actually, right? Like I don't have the, <laughs> I don't have the one that. You know what? Just before you guys head off, I've got I must have a couple. So what's this? This one was from last week. Right? I don't know if Somebody said they had to jump at thirteen hundred, so I wanted to make sure that they got pictures before Aww. they jumped. <laughs> Oh, so beautiful. It's very, very beautiful during the day. And at nighttime, like it's, it's literally, it's a, it's a different story. We don't, yeah, so we don't, we don't have photo shoot. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. It's difficult. Ooh, that one's all white. Yeah, it's all white, white right? Sometimes we're, we're phone to phone and sometimes works. But, but oh, there you go. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> so we bought, we bought this outfit with wings and stuff in 
it's so typical, right? But like, it's yeah, that's the only time I get that, that soft is when it comes to like the kids, and that, that's fine. <laughs> I used to take uh, newborn photos and I will say it always scared me because I'm like maneuvering them and folding them. And I was like, yeah, mom, so you do did it. Did you do that me. as well? Like, they, like literally the like kid, like baby whispers, like we done it with our son. We couldn't do that this time. It was slightly different. But we, when we went to her studio, it's like, she was like, make sure that like you don't wear anything warm because it will be warm. Yeah. And then in the studio was like, literally like, I don't know, like, like but it was a sauna because the baby needs to be so comfortable with our clothes and everything else but like yep. they put them in certain places and like the baby just goes to sleep mm -hmm. every time like what what's happening and with our son <laughs> the funny thing was like we were very surprised after like an, an hour of doing things we we're like i'm actually very surprised he like because he wasn't wearing a nappy so we were like you know he's not even done anything and she was like no no he did twice but i just didn't tell you so like the sheets and stuff are covered and but like that's what they do like and it's, it's amazing so yeah it's i had a bear cute. skin rug it was white and a baby went all over it it was no longer white i had to replace it <laughs> but that's what happens so exactly okay guys well i'm gonna cut it short because i've got a um here it's uh almost 7 p.m so i've got a uh, a birthday meal to go to so um oh, happy birthday. Birthday. Yes, happy birthday. weekend thank you very much and um just to make sure what uh today as as Trail says it's sponsored by lean solutions group so um i needed to make sure that got in there right so have a nice weekend and i'll catch everybody next week bye everyone bye